All right, this is going to be a quick tutorial on how to make automations in FL Studio. Let's get right into it. I have this track, which I'm going to be using to demonstrate. Just a simple little techno track. The most common and easiest way to make an automation is you right click whatever you're trying to automate and you put create automation boom and then you get the automation here i'm automating the cutoff so if i just go in here right that's the easiest way to automate and then whenever you delete an automation you want to make sure to fix your values back to their original state because if you don't the automation even though you deleted it it's still gonna be wherever the automation was at which is a weird thing that happens in fl studio for some reason i'm not sure why they haven't fixed that yet no shade to fl studio i'm just saying let me show you a clearer example right say i automate it create automation clip and i start it up here and then say, I don't want this automation anymore, so I delete it. If I go back over here and I try moving it, it goes back, even though there's no automation. Whenever I start to track, it just resets back. So if you're having that issue, you just right click, delete initial value, and it'll go back to being able to, you're, you, you'll be able to move it again. So yeah, that's that's a problem that will usually come up and I just want to let you guys know how to fix it right away before I get that question later on. All right, so that's how to automate via, you know, create automation clip. Another way which you can automate things is by, of course, linking it to a knob if you have a MIDI control or a MIDI keyboard or some type of control surface. So you can right click here, you put link to controller and you basically move the knob on your MIDI keyboard or your controller or whatever, and it'll link it to the knob. So I have a little knob here on my MIDI keyboard. I'm going to turn it. And now you can see here, it's moving the knob. You know, if you want to automate that way, you can do that. And all you have to do is right click the little record button. You put automation on, make sure it's checked on. I like to turn it off most of the time just because in case I have like the record button on and I'm moving things, it won't record the automation on accident. So I always turn that off. I only turn it on whenever I'm going to record automation. But what you want to do, which is very important, is you want to create a new pattern here and name it like cut off automation, right? And you put that down here below whatever you're trying to automate. Because what it's going to do is it's going to record that automation information into an event. And you want to have that, you know, separately so that you can edit it. You can edit it. So that you can edit it. Hit the record button. And then move the knob. So now you have the automation recorded as an event, which is a lot more precise of an automation rather than doing it with the points on an automation graph. And if you don't want it, you just delete it and, and you don't have any problems, you know. Uh, but you have that there just in case. And what you can do is record several different types of automations in case you want to try different things out. So that's the second way to automate things. Okay, so I have this clap and I want to add delay to it. But I don't want that delay playing consistently. So what you can do is you can create an automation clip and it'll, you know, you can edit it here in the graph. But another way that you can do it is you right click, you know, whatever you're trying to automate and you go where it says edit events in piano roll. Go to where your clap is, right? It's right here. 
if you go where it says control, you'll find it right under here under recent controls. You click on that. And now start down here, which means it's off. You can turn it on for this clap. Or better yet, turn it on for the second clap and then turn it back down. Right, so now you have an automation specifically on one note just here in the piano roll. And that's just another way to automate things. All right, so so far you have create automation clip, which creates the graph. You have link to controller, which will link it to a knob and uh, you'll be able to automate, record the automation as an event. And then you have the option to edit events in the piano roll. And then there's also another option. Say I want to automate the cutoff again of this sound. I can go into controller and put a peak controller, right? And what this is, is it has an LFO, which you can link to different things. So say I want to automate this cutoff through an LFO. So you right click cutoff, link to control. I go into internal controllers, peak LFO. You want to go to the LFO because if not, it'll go into this side. You don't want it to go into the peak. You want it to go into the LFO. And then you just put accept. And if you play, you'll see there's movement which is showing the sound coming through the sound wave. And, but there's no automation going on because you need to turn up the volume. So the bass is where you want it to start, right? This is here at the bottom. If I wanted to, I can move this to the side and it'll start here or it'll start up here. And then the volume is the distance that you want it to automate. So if I want it to move all the way up, it'll automate in this way and if I wanted to automate down you know it'll do that but I just want it from there all the way up or maybe just not all the way up but all the way there and you have different modes you have or different shapes you have a sine wave shape you have a triangle which is more lin linear and you have a square which is just on or off that's basically what it's doing there's no there's no traveling right it's only it's only on the off and on that's what the, sh the, s the square shape does the sine wave has motion so it like it's turning the knob the triangle turns it a little faster or more direct. Square is just on and off on the values that you set. And then the saw wave is just also like a different, it just turns it on and then shuts back down, right? It's just different gates, basically. And then you have random, which puts it on like different values in between the set that you create here. And then you have the speed by which it's moving. And then the phase is basically the different types of algorithms of randomness or where the LFO is going to start, right? The phase of the LFO. But that's another way to automate is you link it to a control and basically the control is moving the knob for you. And you can always go into link to controller, reset, accept, and it'll take it off. And then if you're using a third party plugin and you wanna automate something, it's not gonna let you by right clicking. So what you need to do is you need to move the knob and then go up to tools, last tweaked, and then you put create automation clip or if you want to link it to a controller or whatever it is that you want to do. Um, but that's where the options are going to be. But you have to move the knob first and then go to last tweaked and then put link to controller. That's about it as far as automation clips go. So again, I'm just going to review the different modes. 
you can create automation clip, which makes the graph. And if you click on the graph here, you double click on it, it gives you this. And here you can create an LFO too. So you just click LFO. And then it has the speed here, the amount, and then the curve. You can skew it. Right, so you can create an LFO or you can go into this little arrow right here and you can put uh, create sequence. So then what this does is it's creating a different a sequence. And you have all these parameters that you can change, but you can also randomize it. And you can change the time, which will sh uh, change the speed of the uh, randomization. Basically what it's doing is stretching it. But you notice like it's only a little piece, you can expand it by putting all of these, you put randomize. And you can see it being stretched over here. Yeah, there's a lot of things that you can do with automation. And you can also select points by hitting control and then uh, left clicking. And then you can move all these accordingly and stuff like that. There's a bunch of different options that you can create like smooth up. And you can basically smooth if you want it like just more basic or if you want very complex, then you can go ahead and do that. There's also uh, decimate points. There's all of these options and I recommend you guys explore them if you wanna get to know it a little bit better. Yeah, so right clicking, create automation clip, creates the graph. Or you can right click, put link to controller and you can link it to either a peak controller or to your MIDI keyboard or a MIDI control of some type that has knobs or faders and all you have to do, again, to link it to a, a knob or a fader is just right click what you want to automate, link to controller, and then just move it on the MIDI control. And it'll automatically link it. And then the other form is right clicking, putting edit events in piano roll, or if you put edit events in general, this screen will come up with the events. And then you just got to right click and the options will be under control. So here you have the cutoff one for the analog sound here. And then there's the clap delay one. That's it, baby. That's it. That's how you do it. That's how you make automations in FL Studio. Thank you guys so much for watching. I just want to do something quick. I know a lot of people are searching for this. Uh, a lot of people already know about right clicking and just putting create automation, but I think not a lot of other people know about the other little things that you can do with automation. So I just thought I would put that out there for you guys. And I hope that you learn something. Hopefully you can use it to be creative and make some awesome music. Thank you guys for watching and I will catch y'all next time. Peace.